Pakistan, the scramble to review scenarios after a Monday 6-1 ruling by the Supreme Court that struck down the lifetime ban on uh, running for offices of criminally convicted uh, uh, officials. That includes three-time former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. His Muslim League party uh, has this Tuesday ruled out an alliance with the PPP of Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, even though the latter's predicted that February 8th's general elections would be followed by coalition building. The court ruling uh, could also have consequences uh, for the other big player in Pakistani politics, Imran Khan, whose own bid to return to power has been halted by arrest and a slew of cases brought against him. For more, we cross to London and uh, Ayesha Siddiqui, Senior Research Fellow at the Department of War Studies at King's College London. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you for inviting me. How does Monday's ruling uh, change the campaign for next month's elections? Well, that was already predicted that since Nawaz Sharif has returned from London to Pakistan, that all these hurdles in his way and primary being his disqualification would be removed. So he will be contesting. But that is one part of the problem. The other is now appealing to the voters, to the constituents, and making himself more popular than Imran Khan is in Pakistan at the moment. Imran Khan, uh, who not just him, but uh, senior members of his party have been uh, uh, facing uh, pressure, a crackdown. Well, it's not a simple crackdown. In fact, one of the latest issues that have been created for the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, Imran, Khan, Imran Khan's party, is that its traditional uh, uh, sign, uh, election uh, sign, which is a bat, a cricket bat, has been taken away. Now, that issue is his coming up, is for hearing uh, in front of the Supreme Court as well. But that's part of the problem. Also, many of uh, the PTI leaders, um, their their election, um, you know, uh, papers have not been accepted. I mean, this is a party which is going through salami slicing, a lot of terror, uh, and a lot of pressure and authoritarianism. Now, in that case, Punjab, which is one of the the main province of of Pakistan uh, in terms of its population, the largest province, there the battle will be between. PTI, which is Imran Khan's party, and Pakistan Muslim League, which is led by Nawaz Sharif. How they fare at this moment when Pakistan is economically under a lot of stress, people are very unhappy, and uh, Imran Khan's narrative is catching up. So there's a lot of fight which PMLN, uh, Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz has to do. There's also the People's Party, Pakistan People's Party, which doesn't have a lot of grip in Punjab, but definitely in Sindh. And it seems right now that the election results may not be very clear. There wouldn't be one party with a two-third majority. So contrary to the claims of Sharif's party, uh, there will be coalition building. I suppose there will be coalition building, primarily also because the most powerful stakeholder in Pakistan's politics the Pakistani military would not want to give any party or allow any party a two-third majority. Also, if even everything else being equal, I think right now uh, there is so much of polarization in the society and people, the youth. I mean, Pakistan's population is, Pakistan is a young country. More than 60% of its population is from 18 to 35. There'll be young voters. There are women. Uh, low classes, low middle classes, middle classes in, in general are very supportive of Imran Khan. But you have a situation where Imran Khan doesn't get a fair, uh, you know, a, fair, a fair play here. So in that case, what emerges is possibly a coalition government. It's always from the outside difficult to read Pakistan, Ayesha, how strong or weak the institutions are when a ruling like the one on Monday comes down, uh, uh, allowing Nawaz Sharif to run. What does that say about Pakistan's institutions? I think, firstly, it was um, based on, 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 a, on a very weak case. So um, that way, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an opening for Nawaz Sharif and he should be able to contest. But what it says is that 
The military is the most powerful institution and other institutions are in complete disarray. Uh, whoever, and, 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 the, and the problem is that if there happens to be a coalition government, how is the parliament then powerful enough? There will be a lot of infighting, a lot of give and take. And in the middle of all this give and take, nobody will remember to push back and fight the powerful military. And uh, Nawaz Sharif, do you see him returning for a fourth stint as prime minister? It's right now all up in the air. You know, how, how much uh, support does he get for his party? He is the main candidate. And if his party makes it, definitely they'll put him up as, as the prime ministerial candidate. What, you know, the, the great point says that the establishment or the military is happier with his brother, younger brother, Shabazz Sharif. So there are a lot of things that are yet to be, need to be calculated. For Nawaz Sharif, I think one of the bigger problems is how to keep his party together, um, his absence, the pressure from the establishment all these years has created problems. So let's see if he can make it. Uh, you know, he's, he's a good candidate, but let's see. And, and will the other question is, will the results satisfy the general public who are very unhappy and who feel that the, the, the election results are already pre-decided. So there is a lot of discomfort with, with, the, with the way uh, in which democracy is going in Pakistan. Ayesha Sadiqa, so many thanks for joining us from London. Thank you.